Right, in this video, I'm uh, wiring up some rear lights that'll be run off the toggle switches in uh, my 2017 Ford F-250. Uh, the F, uh, this generation has, comes with a bank of auxiliary switches already kind of wired in, which is super handy. So I'm gonna be adding, uh, tapping into one of those to uh, put in these re uh, rear lights. And they're the same lights that I put on my tractor. If you wanna see that video, there'll be a link somewhere up here. Basically, I bought a four pack of the lights specifically because I knew I was gonna put them on the truck for this exact reason when I have the gooseneck trailer uh, and I'm going in reverse. I, it doesn't really add much illumination because they're pretty much blocked by the trailer. So these ones are gonna get a point off to the side a little bit. Should help uh, when I'm backing up the trailer uh, on the north side of the property where there's not a lot of illumination there. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, you know, subscribe, uh, you know, comment and all that stuff. It does help the channel, so I'd appreciate it if you if you can, even if it just says, you know, thank you very much. Um, and then uh, one thing I, I messed up when I initially installed the lights, I put them in series versus in uh, parallel. So you'll see me wiring it in series initially, but then I went to go troubleshoot it and it didn't work. And basically what happens is when you put them in series. So series just means that, you know, you go from the power, the, the main power goes from one light through that light to the next light and then to ground. So that's in series versus in parallel where you basically split off the power and it goes to each light individually and then each one goes to ground individually. Basically what happens when they're in series, there's just too much resistance to allow enough uh, electricity to flow through both of them to illuminate. Um, so yeah, I found that when I was, and I probably forgot about it because it's been a yeah. while since I, I wired up the tractor. Um, but uh, once I, I fix that, then uh, they work just fine. So uh, let's get into it. All right, here we are in the engine bay. Here's the wires. Now you can look in the owner's manual, but if you don't have an owner's manual for whatever reason, I will list out at the description which wires goes to what. Um, but the green and brown, this one right here, is the one for switch one. That's the one I'll be using. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tie, end up tying these ones back up into and just zip tying them kind of back to where they were uh, probably not the exact same spot because it was kind of a pain to uh, to see and cut the, uh, the zip tie where it was located and then here is kind of the small little um, box that has the relays and the switches and the, and the um, fuses so I'm just going to put the cover back on I actually don't need to take this cover off whatsoever I just thought that the wires were inside there but they're they're on the back side here so, so we'll go with that. Let's uh, start running some wire and then before I tie it into it. So I took this plastic uh, filler rod here. Uh, I'm gonna use it to help snake up through the engine bay. I hope it's, it's rigid enough if I tape two of them together. So we'll see. Otherwise, I'll just have to feed the wire down, um, which will work, but it just, then I have to like feed from the roll at the top in the, in the bay, in the, engine bay. Yay, it worked. So now I can just hook this up here. I don't have the roll of wire up here and feeding it down to the rest of the truck. So uh, now I can go along and I'll show you where I'm going to planning on feeding it. Might be hard to tell, but this is a wire harness here. And it goes to the back so I figured I'll just follow that pretty easy peasy okay for anybody else who's watched any of my other um, wiring videos this will look somewhat pretty familiar so I'm gonna take that off here Burp. that can go back to where it came from I don't want the wire to fall down all right I'm gonna cut the end of this isn't perpendicular, so I'll just trim that real quick. Trim this real quick. Alrighty. Now I gotta strip them. This looks like 16 gauge wire. I know the red one is, because I bought it. I don't to take off too much. The other one. Looks like it might be like a 14 gauge. I'll take off just a touch more. All right. So then next 
step. Oh. Shrink tube, I don't need this much. Let's see how much do I need. So I just want to shrink a little bit more than that. So I'm going to cut that right there. This is what I always forget to do. I always forget, actually I'm going to put it on this side. So I, if I put it on the red wire, it could fall all the way down to the bottom. But if I put it here, it can only go so far. So we'll get this. Let's give it a little twist. So I use this instead of soldering. Soldering um, can crack. This is based on some information I got from a guy who is a master mechanic who did a lot of work at a prototype shop that I worked at. Um, got a new tool. I got this at Tractor Supply. This one seems like I do have to light it though, but this seems like it's a little bit nicer than the other ones I've used. Right. I'm use this little pen. Try not to get too close. doing some wiring in the truck. I'm adding some lights in the back. All right, that's it for this side. So now, zip tie up all these extra wires here. I think I might need to get bigger zip ties. And then, uh, nope, this is fine. I'm gonna start running the wire for the rest of the system. All right, got the wires all wired up. Well, wired up, run. So that's coming down here. I'm gonna mount it right to the back here. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the bumper. I have pretty good access on the back side here. Looks like something must have hit it right here at some point. And then I gotta figure out where I'm gonna ground it. I can either take out one of these, get a salt trapping screw. I don't know, I'll figure that part out in a bit. But anyways, the light will go here. itself in order for it to uh, hopefully crimp it. Let's see.
so this one's wired up pretty much the same. I got the positive coming in, now the negative is gonna go to a ground. So I added this um, connector here and then I drilled a hole right there that I can stick uh, this nut through. Now you can do different things. You can do a, a, like a self-tapping screw into here. Um, I didn't have any available, so that's why I'm using the stainless steel M6s. And then, um, uh, and then it'll just clip on that. So then it should hopefully work. I'll be able to test it here. After troubleshooting, I realized that uh, they don't work unless they're wired in what's called parallel. So the hot wire is coming in here. It gets shared here. The other wire right here goes to the other light. And then it's ground directly here. All right, and that's how they work. So this is without the lights on. Let's see if I can get the reverse on now. There you go, with the lights on. Not with the reverse lights on at the moment, but I think it would be especially handy when like turning and all that. Uh, I'm excited. I think this is good. Happy with the results. I hope you found the video uh, useful. Again, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, and uh, you know, check out other videos, please and like, subscribe, all that jazz, uh, comment does help, and uh, thank you very much.